I wanted to do a programming video based on a user request. So Mark H asked, how could he write a DOS program that would generate a random number? So if he gave it the number 16, he wanted to generate a random number between one and 16. So for example, you might be throwing a random dice uh, and you just want to get the result back. Or maybe you can give it a different range, maybe like maybe minus 100 to plus 100. So you can get a random number between minus 100 and plus 100. This is actually a pretty easy program to write. And so I wanted to do that in this week's programming video. So we're going to start a new program here. I don't have anything in this directory yet. I'm going to use the fed editor because I like using that for my programming. And we're going to start a new program called rand. So rand.c. Now, uh, when I uh, need to print information, I need to first include the standard I.O. That's going to define certain functions that will do input and output. And specifically, that defines the printf function that I'm going to use. Now, I'm also going to be using the random number system. So I need to do uh, include uh, standard lib.h, right? That's standard library. And that's where rand and srand uh, are defined. And I'm also going to be pulling the number of seconds since DOS started counting time, which is the time function. And that's include, uh, that's defined in the time.h. So we'll do include time.h. Okay, let's go ahead and, and write our program. So we'll do a main function, oops, int main. Uh, and uh, we're not going to read command line options yet, so I'll leave that uh, parameter list empty just, just for now. We'll come back to that. So the way that you would uh, first start uh, generating random numbers, you need to seed the random number generator, and you're going to do that with the srand function. Now, normally you'd give it some kind of a number, and we're going to give it the number of seconds that have elapsed since DOS started counting time. So we're going to do uh, the time function. And if you uh, normally would give it a pointer to a variable that is going to store the results, it'll also return the, the number of seconds as the function return. But uh, you normally would give it a pointer to a variable uh, or null if you don't want it to store any data anywhere, just return it through the function call. So we're going to do time null. And now let's go ahead and print out our random number. So I'm going to do a printf on an integer. And we're going to do uh, the, uh, the random number. And we're going to do modulo. Let's say 1 to 10. So uh, modulo of 10 for any number will give you a number between 0 and 9. So if the number was equally divisible by 10, you'll get a, a, a remainder. That's what modulo is calculating. Remainder of 0. Uh, and then all the way up through 9. You can never actually have a modulo of 10 if you're doing modulo of 10, uh, because it only gets 0 through 1 minus that number. So uh, that's how we're going to generate a random number between 0 and 9. But I want this to actually be between 1 and 10. So I'm just going to add 1 to it. Uh, so I do that here. I don't actually need the parentheses, extra parentheses around that uh, modulo calculation, but I find it helps readability. So I'm going to include that there. And then we'll return back to the operating system after we've printed it. Now, I actually, I don't like using uh, hard numbers or hard-coded values in my program. And so I'm actually going to up here use int. Uh, the start of my range is 1. And then the end of my range is 10. And so I can actually replace now uh, the 10 with the variable end. And start with the variable, uh, sorry, 1 with the variable of start. Now let's go ahead and uh, save this. And now we're going to compile with the Watcom compiler and linker. And uh, let's make it a quiet compiler. It's kind of chatty. So we're gonna, we'll turn off all the extra uh, output. Uh, if we get an error or a warning, it'll still print it out. But dash, dash Q will turn off most of the other stuff. And then we'll do that on rand.c. And I'm not seeing any warnings or errors. And so that's good. So if I now run rand, uh, now it's going to generate a random number between 1 and 10. And so that's how you would write a very simple program to calculate a random number. Now, uh, this actually has a resolution of one second because the time function is telling you the number of seconds that have elapsed since DOS started counting time. And so obviously that means that if I run this more than one time in a second, uh, the C to be the same number. And so I'll get the same random number back. And so let's do this a couple of times here. And you can see that if I ran, ran that a couple of different times in the same second, uh, I'm getting the same random number back, six. Uh, 
Uh, there is actually a way to uh, write this program to get the resolution of the time down to one one hundredth of a second. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this video, but uh, I will upload a version of this program and that will have uh, the resolution down to one one hundredth of a second. So check the source code for that. Uh, the link will be in the video description and that'll show you how you can use uh, the DOS function call to pull out the uh, the time. Uh, down to one one hundredth of a second and use that as part of your uh, seed. Let's go ahead and update this program though a little bit. And so we're going to do a fed on my rand.c. And remember, I wanted to be able to use the uh, uh, command line options to give it a range. And so to read the command line, you need to do int argc, that's the argument count. How many uh, options do I have on the command line? And then care arg v that's the argument vector and that's a uh, list of strings uh, that is every option on my command line so uh, if i uh, let's now look at the command line options so we're going to examine the command line and so um, if the argument count was two what does that mean that means that the usage was uh, rand and then uh, the ending value. And so for that, I wanna now uh, change the ending value. So we'll do end equals, and then uh, the function is uh, a to i will actually turn a string into an integer. And so what is that? That's argv1. Right? That's the first command line option. And uh, if if I had two command line options, that would be um, arg c three, and that would look like rand and then start and end. So in this case, start is a to i arg v one, and the end is a to i arg v two. And oops, the extra line there. And of course, if my um, this my open parentheses there, let's go ahead and change that. Um, and if the um, argument count was uh, greater than two, that means obviously I'm sorry, greater than three. Uh, then that means um, I have a wrong command line. <laughs> so uh, wrong command line. And uh, I just want to print out an error. So in this case, we'll do a, uh, uh, let's do a, a put s. And uh, we'll say uh, too many options. And then we'll, we'll tell you uh, what the usage is. So the usage is rand and it's the uh, ending value. And I'm sorry, the, the, uh, uh, it's the start value and the ending value. So we'll just say rand uh, is one one way of doing it, and then uh, put s. We'll say the other op way to run this is usage uh, rand ending value, and then put s usage is rand start and end value. Right, and then since we can't go on, we'll just say return one. That's going to return an error back to the operating system. Uh, and uh, if the argv or argc was one, then that means that uh, we we're going to use the defaults, which is uh, which means we don't need to do any a to i uh, calculations there. So uh, let's let's make sure that the range the range is right. So we probably should check the range. Check the range. So uh, did we somehow set it up so that the starting value is greater than or equal to the ending value? Right, that's not good. And so we'll want to say uh, uh, wrong range. And so we'll say uh, uh, just a put s. Probably should be printing this to standard error, but uh, we'll do a put s here. Uh, we'll say a bad range. And then we'll say print f. Uh, what, what is the start value in this case? So start is this value. Oops. And then the ending value is that. We'll say start and end. Now the user knows what they put in that was wrong. Um, and we should probably exit back the operating system. And so we'll return two. 
All right, so now we can generate our random number because we now we know that our number should be safe, our, our range should be safe. So uh, we'll, we'll uh, generate a random number. And we should be able to use uh, the rest of the code that we'd already written. So we're going to see the random number generator with the current time, and then we're going to print out a random number uh, with a modulo of end value. And um, and then the start value. Actually, um, no, I need to do uh, replace this with actually how big is my range, right? Because actually this could now be, let's say, minus 100 to plus 100. So I need to say uh, end uh, minus the start. And so if the range was uh, 1 to 10, let's say, uh, that's going to give me 10 minus 1, which is 9. And actually, I want to then add 1, right? Because that's uh, that'll get me a range of uh, modulo of 10. Uh, and so that's that's the number I'd want to use. I'll do end minus start plus 1. Uh, and so now you can see what we're adding to uh, turn that into a new random number. And we're going to add then the start value. Let's go ahead and save and quit. And let's recompile our program. Watcom compiler and linker will make it quiet on rand.c. Ooh, and I have a, a missing stuff here on line 17. So uh, fed uh, rand.c. So let's go back and find my bug. Um, what did I do wrong? Oh, uh, instead of else, I need to have else if. And so now I can go ahead and save and quit. I think that's my only error. Watcom compiler and linker will make it quiet. Rand.c. Uh, oh, I have a line error in line 22. So let's check that real quick. Uh, Rand.c and go down to line 22. Let's see if we can see what's there. Um, oh, yeah. Instead of an else, this has to be an else, another else if. Oops. Save and quit, Watcom compiler and linker, quiet rand.c. And now I can run rand. This will give me a value between 1 and 10. Or I can do a rand from minus 10 to plus 10. I run that a couple of times. You can see I'm getting uh, negative values as well. And I can do a rand of minus 100 to plus 100. And so that allows me to now generate some. Uh, random numbers or whatever I want. And of course, I can make this a, uh, a rand of 16 and see, I get a random number between 1 and 16. And so this is how you would write a random number program to generate random numbers uh, from DOS. So uh, it's a good example for C programming. And I wanted to share that with you. So uh, what'd you think about this program? Share it in the comments below. Uh, before I go, I want to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. So thank you very much for that. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you especially here for that too. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And consider supporting me on Patreon. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.